So, this is a story about a piano bench. We got a free piano from our neighbors a little while ago, and uh, the piano bench that came with it was one of those beautiful compressed wood jobs with the printed overlay. My wife had been asking for something better, and so when the Rockler Bentwood Challenge came along, I decided to put my hand to it. What you see me doing here is laying out the original design, which I went through several iterations until I finally landed on something I was happy with. A quick trip to the bandsaw and the oscillating belt sander gave me a template that I could use to begin building up my forms. What you see me doing here is laying down painter's tape on both sides of the template, the master and the future form. And then I'm going to apply some super glue and accelerator to attach the two together. The benefit of using super glue and tape is you can attach the forms together without any clamps, which means when you're using the flush trim router, you don't have to worry about clamps getting in the way and you can just focus on getting a nice, safe, smooth cut. Here you can see how easy it is to separate the template when using the super glue and tape trick. Now it's just a matter of adding a few extra pieces and repeating the flush trimming to build up the form. As you can see, I find that mayonnaise works exceptionally well as an adhesive when building forms out of MDF. Here I'm cutting off the excess to give me a flat base. This is where design change number one enters the mix. As I was making these cuts I noticed that there was something wrong with my bandsaw and I started tuning it up and discovered that there was uh, a broken part which leads me to having to cut all of the strips for the bent lamination on the table saw instead of on the band saw. This means that the grain continuity across the edge isn't quite the same, so it doesn't look like a bent board. Now it obviously looks like laminations, which is okay since this is attempt number one. One of the best things I've learned how to do in woodworking is splitting myself into four for repetitive tasks like this. It helps them go by quicker and, you know, you're a little bit more focused and less likely to cause an accident or have an injury. So I somehow neglected to film the actual glue up. So here's a dramatic reenactment for the sake of completeness in this video. When doing a bent lamination glue up, you 
apply a thin layer of glue to each laminate and then stack them up. Use the clamp, clamp it down, and bang, you're all done. Twelve seconds later. <gasps> it worked. Here I'm using the jointer to clean off one edge of the laminations. Running it through the planer makes the other side parallel and cleans off the remaining glue. Here I'm marking them all to cut the same length. Since each one glued up a little bit differently, have to shift them back and forth a little bit to get the curve to match up just right. Busting out the tape and super glue again, I'm going to attach each leg to the template. And then I'm going to use the template as a sled to cut the angle at the bottom. Since the angle is kind of arbitrarily defined, I don't actually know what it is. And so this makes it easy to just cut it and reference off the template so they'll all be the same. Here you can see the line that we marked earlier for the length. So my original plan is not going to work. During stress testing, the uh, joints failed to hold. I'm going to figure out how to do what I was originally going to do sometime later. I think what I'm going to do is change up my plan. So we'll see how that goes. So I lost the footage of the gluing up these legs and cutting in the splines and stuff and I think what happened is I didn't get enough glue in there and it just failed to hold. Here I'm flattening off one part of the leg and then I'm going to glue each one up in pairs. Again with the mayonnaise Mayonnaise works really well as a wood glue. You should try it. This is a piece of sapili that I've picked up that I'm going to use for the seat base on the piano bench. After jointing the edges, I'm gluing them into a single panel because it wasn't quite wide enough.
Here's the glued up legs. And I trimmed the top panel to 14 inches for the seat. And here you see me trimming the end of the top panel, or the seat. Trimming it to length and trimming it square. Here I'm laying out the mortises that the legs are going to fit into. Whenever possible you should always reference your piece rather than measurements. It just makes things a little bit more accurate. And in this case, since I made a few mistakes, if I'd cut to a measurement, uh, they wouldn't have fit at all. I use a drill press to clear out most of the waste then go back with my chisel and square things up. I cut in a decorative curve and cleaned it up with the oscillating spindle sander. Here I'm setting up to cut some uh, sliding dovetails to attach the stringers to underneath to provide some racking stability when you're sitting on it. Nothing's better than a wobbly seat. Here I'm cutting the dovetail on the end of the stringers and dry fitting everything together. Here I'm laying out a radius on the ends just to kind of give it a little bit of a decorative look. Uh, it didn't end up doing the original profiles that I was intending to, mostly because of time and waiting for the router bit that I wanted to show up. So it's a little plainer than I wanted, but I think it turned out alright anyway. And of course uh, I turned my sander on and let it do its thing. And time for glue and assembly. Ultimately, the design changed quite a bit from what I had originally had envisioned, but it's the nature of things when you're kind of making it on the fly and out of your head. One day I might get into learning how to do 3D modeling and then I can make all my mess ups on a computer instead of using actual wood, but all in all I think it turned out alright anyway. I drilled some elongated holes through the base just to allow for wood movement to the top. Here I'm using a square board cut to the appropriate length as a story stick to get 
the legs all cut to the same length. When it comes to measuring and marking curved pieces like this, it's really hard to do it without some sort of story stick or fixed measuring point or reference point from which you can measure. A little bit of Osmo Poly X and you can see the Sapili really starts to pop. This is probably everybody's favorite part. At least it is mine. And we're done. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click like and subscribe, all that other stuff.